Okay, so we will continue with our abdominal imaging uh, series. Uh, and this week, since last week we talked about the uh, Crohn's disease, this week we will, to cover it up, we will continue with ulcerative colitis, radiologic features. It will be presented by our friend, Dr. Haujin. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Today, we have a colitis, radiological features. Starting from the, uh, as a definition, it's a relapsing and chronic inflammation of the colon. It affects this just colon, not the whole uh, giant like Crohn's disease. In Crohn's disease, it can affect any parts from the mouth to anus. In ulcerative colitis, it typically affects the colon and starts from the rectum. Rectum is always involved. The age prevalence between 15 to 25 years of age, which is uh, a young age, we have another onset after 50 years sometimes. Clinical features, the patient will have bloody diarrhea, tenesmus, passage of mucus, tenesmus means a um, painful urge to pass through uh, where there is no nostril in the rectum. Uh, passage of mucus, cranky abdominal pain, and other constitutional symptoms like fever, weight loss, and general malaise. Extra intestinal manifestations, like inflammation anywhere uh, from the body, uh, apart from the colon, like the inflammation of the joint atrophy, erythema, nodosum, pyoderma, and crinosum, which is painful ulcers on the skin, and sclerosing cholangitis. Pathogenesis is, is it's important because it's related to the radiological features. Each stage has a different radiological features. That's why I like to talk about it. In males, there's fine granularity of the mucosa, mucosa of the colon, just fine granularity. Moderate, coarse granularity, marked erythema, contact bleeding, bleeding when on touching, and no ulceration. In severe disease, there's spontaneous bleeding and ulceration. In low standing, there's pseudopolyps, which is the remaining uh, normal balance of mucosa between the ulcerated parts, and shortening, narrowing of colon. And the last stage, colonial disease, it's, it's, there will be toxic megacolon. Uh, about the radiological features, aside from ultrasound, the main features are bowel wall thickening, as you see, alteration of the bowel echo uh, pattern, and hyperemia, loss of colonic hostra, as you see. And uh, the plain flame, it's not specific in mild colitis, however, it's a reliable and rapid assessment in active colitis, the severe stage of the disease. You can see uh, uh, widening of the colonic uh, diameter, transverse colon will be more than 5.5 cm uh, to decide if it is a uh, toxic megacolon, yes. Uh, and neural thickening, you can see uh, clearly the colonic wall, mucosal abnormality, these islands that arouse and empty right colon because the patient has profuse diarrhea, so the colon mostly will be empty and uh, free air. If there is perforation of the colon, there will be free air in the uh, abdominal episode, but it's more reliable to be detected with CT. And uh, as uh, I talked about, the transverse uh, colon diameter toxic megacolon should be more than 5.5 cm. And the hostra will be blunted. It's not so clear. This is because of the neuromuscular degeneration. The acceleration at the uh, last stage will affect the muscular, muscular part, and there will be blunting of the hostra. Uh, in Crohn's disease, if you remember, the ulcers are so deep, and there's intervening normal because they're so cobblestoning. In this, uh, in uh, ulcerative colitis, there is no deep ulcers, apart from the last stage. Otherwise, ulceration is superficial and continuous. Uh, Pyrum enema at early stage shows blurring of the mucosa line and fine granularity. In fluoroscopy, uh, yeah, it's investigation of choice. It's more accurate than single contrast in revealing early disease and overall colon morphology. At the early stage, fine granularity is clear in this image. And at the disease develops coarse granularity and alteration, as you see. The ulcers are good in shape because they are undermined and uh, they are always superficial and continuous, but this is long standing case. Uh, and there will be other features like shortening and narrowing of the colon. Uh, this is because of 
hypertrophy of the muscular layer, this narrowing, rather than fibrosis. Fibrosis is a feature of Crohn's disease, but this is due to hypertrophy of the muscle layer. Um, also, it's a compact bifosterobland thing, as I said, luminal narrowing. Um, I just did that. Pseudopolyp appearance. This is the remaining uh, small mucosa between the ulcerated parts, um, as you see here. And uh, this is endoscopy. These parts are the same. <laughs> this is a, a long standing stage of the, uh, of the ulcerative colitis. The colon will be featureless, like a short, long, uh, and uh, narrowing tube, which is lead pipe sign. It's called the short, low, low. Is short. it short, yeah, long? Sorry. Short, yeah, short. Short. Yeah. And featureless with no ostra. Uh, in those individuals uh, with a total colitis, the endocecal valve becomes fixed and incompetent, as you see, and there is thickening and granularity of the terminal ilia. This is uh, called backwash ilias. It's a feature of ulcerative colitis. Should not be confused with terminal ilias of the Crohn's disease. The CT scan will reflect the same change that we talked uh, in the fluoroscopy. Uh, in addition to directly visualize the colonic wall, the terminal medium and complications like abscess perfect separation, you can see more clearly at the CT. However, CT is not uh, so clear at the early stage of this. Uh, there are some science features at the CT. First, inflammatory pseudopolyps. Uh, inflamed and thickened bowel wall target appearance. In chronic cases, fatal sign, we have images later. I will explain. An ex extra neural position of file leads to thickening of periorectal file and widening of perisacral space and sectors. It's more clear in the. Yes. Uh, this is a CT scan, a coronal section. As you see, there is mucosal islands and thickening of the bowel wall. Uh, and the image, the same. This is mucosal islands. Target size, there is neural stratification. As you see, these lines uh, shows the typical appearance of the target. Uh, why is, that's why it's called target sign. And fat hollow sign, there is, uh, this is mucosa. Uh, and some mucosa fat uh, deposition will uh, show a, a sign that's called fat hollow sign. This is the fat. Yeah. The surrounding fat is good. More. Yeah. MRI is not invasive technique for extent of more severe disease. It shows wall thickening, medium wall thickness of column range from 4.7 to 9.8, more severe more thickness, and it shows the same features at the CT uh, nearly. With the additional features, there's increased enhancement, in enhancement of mucosa with no or less enhancement of submucosa. Well, other features like loss of hostile markings, backwash, aliases, widening of presacral space. And, uh, this is MRI showing uh, thickening of the bowel wall. Yeah, and another image. There's enhancement of some mucosa with less enhancement, uh, enhancement of mucosa with less enhancement of some mucosa. And uh, whenever there is uh, fat deposition, the periorectal area, this space will be widened. Widened of presacral space, which is a feature of ulcerative colitis. Then narrowing of the rectum because of hypertrophy of the muscular layer. And uh, also proliferation of the periorectal fat. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs>